so hello everyone welcome you all to this new video so i had started with the subject uh, digital image processing and i have completed two videos where i have covered two of the very important concepts so in the first video i had discussed with the fundamental steps and components related to the image processing and in the second video we have seen with the structure of the human eye and how the image is formed inside an human eye okay so those who have not seen those videos please go and watch it it is available in the channel and please watch each and every video because all these videos uh, i'm i'm doing with the perspective of the exams which you are going to have in the upcoming monday so i'm going to cover the all of the very very important concepts of uh, all the five modules in these upcoming videos okay so stay tuned so in this video from module 1 we are going to discuss with the concept related to brightness adaptation and discrimination okay brightness adaptation and discrimination so this is one question related to uh, brightness adaptation and discrimination which i think that we, which needs to be discussed because this is very important outline the concept of brightness adaptation and brightness discrimination so what do you mean by brightness adaptation and discrimination is so in an image if you want to process an image the main thing the main parameter which comes into the picture is called as the brightness okay brightness is very important for any image to look in a better quality or to be enhanced okay so in order to enhance any image the adaptation of brightness and the discrimination of bright brightness with respect to the ability of a of an human eye that is how it is visual to other uh, perspective that and all you should be keeping in mind okay first let us see some important points here the eye's ability to discriminate between different intensity levels is an important consideration in presenting the image processing result that is if you want the eye to be uh, to be having the capability of discriminate between the any two pictures if you see the main the main role the main thing which acts here is the intensity level okay the intensity level could be controlled by adjusting the brightness okay so that would be improving the image processing results the range of light intensity levels to which the human visual system can adapt is enormous on the order of 10 to the power 10 okay so this is the range of the human eye from the scotopic threshold to the glare limit the experimental evidence indicates that the subjective brightness is a logarithmic function of the light intensity of the eye okay that is this point you should be remembering that is it is the subjective brightness is a logarithmic function of the light intensity in incident on the eye okay so here we have the graph here for the uh, brightness adaptation and discrimination okay so this is the adaptation range here they have given okay that is this, uh, which which ranges from the scotopic th threshold to the glare limit as mentioned and this is the log of intensity which is given in ml okay so these are the different values this is the scotopic range graph here and this is the photopic range graph which has the uh, uh, coefficients of scotopic and photopic as b of a and b of b okay so these two graphs you should be drawing and you should be mentioning the range of these in respect to the log of intensity and adaptation rate okay so please note this down this is very important the essential point on interpreting the impressive dynamic range depicted is that visual system cannot operate over such range simultaneously that is these ranges cannot be adaptable together okay these two ranges have their separate set of uh, intensity levels which cannot be uh, altered or controlled okay based on the human eye uh, how much range that eye is having to look at the image the these are the factors which affect on that that is scotopic and photopic rather it accomplishes this large variation by changing its overall sensitivity and that phenomenon is called as brightness adaptation that is by changing the sensitivity of the eye if you want to uh, get one uh, brightness adaptation between these two factors that is scotopic and photopic in order to have a constant range of uh, uh, system that is called as image sensitivity and that phenomenon would be represented as brightness adaptation okay for any set of conditions the current sensitivity level of brightness visual system is called as brightness adaptation level okay so note these things down next let us get to the brightness discrimination how the brightness can be discriminated into various levels or factors ability of the eye to discriminate between changes in light in intensity at any specific adaptation level is called as level is also of the considerable interest 
A classic experiment used to determine the capability of human visual system for the brightness discrimination consists of having the subject look at the flat, uniformly illuminated area large enough to occupy entire field of view. That is here they have given one simple scenario for this discrimination of brightness. That is subject look at the flat, uniformly illuminated area large enough to occupy the entire field of view. That is some illuminations or any illusions you, you would have seen in your life uh, that some illusion videos and all they would be seeing right in that what uh, what they tell you to they, they would be telling you to see at one particular point and uh, you glare at that point and uh, the area which is present uh, within that point is completely illuminated and moving here and there okay so that is called as the brightness discrimination where at that time the human eye won't be able to understand whether the image is still or moving that is with respect to the changes in the brightness okay so the brightness discrimination would be a, a simple example for that illusion okay this area typically is a diffuser such as opaque glass okay so this is one thing opaque glass illuminated from behind by a light source whose intensity can be varied to this field has added an increment of illumination in the form of short duration flash that appear as a circle in the center of the uniformly illuminated field okay so this is that circle okay which i which i told you that this is one point and this is the completely illuminated area and uh, as shown in the figure in this circle it, it is given by the illuminated area is given by i plus delta i and this is the complete illuminated area okay so based on this illuminated area we have one factor to be remembering with respect to the illumination that is in order to control the illumination or check through the illumination, we have one important term that is called as Weber ratio. Okay. The quantity of delta IC by I, where delta IC is increment of illumination. Okay. Discriminate, discriminable 50% of time with background illumination I is called as Weber ratio. Okay. So this is the definition of Weber ratio. Small value of this Weber ratio that is delta IC by I indicates small percentage change in intensity is discriminable which represent good brightness discrimination okay the, if we have if we have this weber ratio value is smaller in number that is small percentage change in intensity is discriminable with resp uh, that represents the good brightness discrimination okay so if, if you have the good brightness discrimination the weber ratio value should be very less conversely a large value of weber ratio that is delta ic by i means that the large percentage change in intensity is required and the brightness discrimination would be very poor okay so this is the plot of good versus poor with respect to the weber ratio that is log i versus log of delta ic by i okay so you see here this plot here a plot of log delta ic by i as a function of log i has a general shape shown okay so this is that general shape it shows that brightness discrimination is poor at low levels of illumination. Okay. So that is you see here illumination levels you see here. At low levels the brightness discrimination is very poor. That is it doesn't uh, change drastically. Whereas when it comes to one constant range the illumination would be very very fast and it improves significantly as background illumination increases. Okay. So let us next discuss with some of the important factors related to the match bands. So these match bands are simply one kind of uh, an image where the intensity level should be dr drastically reduced or increased. Okay. With respect to the shape, you see here in the first band, we have one dark image and in the second, second band, uh, so some slight light image that is some pixels or the pixel values would be reduced. Okay. It would be turning towards white okay like that we have four band changes okay you see here this is the actual intensity and this is the perceived intensity that is actual intensity is very high and uh, if you compare it with band by band it would be slightly getting increased that is the pixel value would be uh, getting reduced to the highest value that is 255 that is the complete white shape okay perceived intensity is the slight change in between this uh, this the drastic change from one color to other that is getting varied with respect to the perceived intensity okay although the intensity of the stripe is constant we actually perceive a brightness pattern that is strongly scalloped near the boundaries okay that is this is these are the boundaries here 
one, two, three. These are the three boundary lines. And in, in those three boundary lines, the intensity is strongly scalloped. That is, from that line, the intensity is getting splitted up. Okay. So those lines are those lines which indicates the split in the intensity levels are called as match bands. Okay. Next is const contrast. So here you see here, this is actually a completely uh, there are two boxes here, one is small and big box in these three. And if you compare here, this is uh, completely black. Okay, just imagine that this outer box is completely black here. And the in the second box, the second outer box is slightly light in color, that is black only. And the third box is completely white. Okay, now if you compare these three boxes, and uh, if you see the inner box color, you will be thinking that for these three inner box, the colors are different, but it is not like that. Due to the background uh, color that is from dark to light, you would be thinking that the inner color is also uh, different. But if you compare it, uh, see it very carefully, that is if you uh, focus on only the inner boxes, you would be coming to know that all the three inner box colors are the same. Okay, So these are the contrast levels which would be varying with respect to concentric images. Okay. If you have some kind of concentric images which I had mentioned here, like this, okay, like this, if you observe this only this part that is only this dot and the background image would be in our, our human eye, the background image would be completely blur. Whereas if you don't observe this point and if you observe the background, then this point would be completely blur. So that that is the eye discrimination or the brightness discrimination. Okay. The second phenomenon is called as this simultaneous contrast is related to the fact that the region's perceived brightness does not depend simply on its intensity. All, all the center squares have exactly the same intensity as I have told you. The colors are exactly the same. However, they appear to the eye to become darker as the background gets lighter. That is because these two colors are completely opposite to each other. Since the outer background color, it is turning from dark to light. So the uh, our eye would be thinking that this inner background color would be turning from light to dark. Okay. So that's why this is the discrimination which is happening place. And second, this is the second phenomenon which is called as contrasting. Next is optical illusions. Okay. So this is not new to you all. Optical illusions. Other examples of human perception phenomena are optical illusions in which the eye fills in non-coexisting information over wrongly perceived geometrical properties of objects. Okay. So these figures are some of the examples. So that is there ha we have four figures here. You see here one, two, three, four. Okay. So figure one in figure one, you see here what they have given is the outline of the square is seen clearly. That is the fact that no lines defining such a figure are a part of the image. But if you observe at the first glance, first glance, if you see this image, what you would be observing is you would be observing three fourth circles that is four three fourth circles you would be observing first but if you observe carefully how these four are kept together if you observe carefully the boundaries of these it would be forming a square inside okay so those are the eye discriminations that is i won't be able to glance the square at first what it be what it would be it would be glancing is the four circles which are kept outside but if you observe very carefully only the boundaries that is these four lines if you observe that is kept in such a way that to form a square inside. Okay. Yeah. So this was one thing. Next you see figure two. The same effect this time with the circle can be seen. Okay. So you see here at the first glance what you would be thinking that these are the lines kept here like this. But you observe very carefully in between these a circle is getting formed. Right. So that you won't be observing. Okay. Figure three. The two horizontal line segments. So this is very interesting are of the same length but one appears shorter than the other okay so this would be very very evident all of you would be telling that this this line is smaller than this line right but what if i tell you that these two lines are completely equal yes they are equal only thing that it makes one small and one big is the arrow mark okay so here the arrow mark is towards outwards and here the arrow mark is inwards so these with this arrow mark the you would be thinking that the lines are one is small and one is big but it is not like that if you remove this arrow mark here you would be saying that these two lines are equal you see here i'll try to show you all
now you see if i remove the arrow mark these two are of the same length right yeah figure 4 all lines that are oriented at 45 degree are equidistant and parallel yet the cross hatching creates the illusion that those lines are far from being parallel that is you see here these cross lines you would be seeing right these cross lines here they are actually parallel to each other they are actually parallel all these lines are parallel but due to these uh, horizontal vertical lines which are made in th uh, upon those lines those things would be affecting that they would be, you would be thinking that these lines are not at all parallel but they are parallel okay so these are some of the examples for brightness adaptation and discriminations under optical illusions okay so please make a note of this and uh, that's all for the video guys so hope you understood this video and uh, this is very important so that's why i thought of doing this so this they might be appearing in the they might be asking in the exam so if they ask if these many things if you write easily you would be getting full marks okay so that's always thank you